Howdy folks, this is Feanor, and thank you for spending time together with me on the internet. Uh, today's video is going to be about how to properly manage your rotations for racing in Pegaxi. Um, this is a shout out to Verlorn and all my other guildmates in Moagmi who helped uh, teach me about this strategy, and I thought I would make a video about it so that any of our guildmates can reference this and hopefully improve your win rates. Uh, according to what I've heard from some of the people who do it, you can improve your win rates by maybe you know five to ten percent per pega, and uh, that is substantial and does add up over time. So I highly encourage everyone to learn and utilize this strategy while RNG remains a component of the uh, race results in Pegaxi. So uh, without further ado, let's switch over to my desktop broadcasting software. And um, I've done a few uh, very <laughs> basic graphics, but they should suffice to help illustrate the strategy and uh, you know help explain it to you in a visual format. See you in just a minute. Okay, and here we are on my beautifully designed MS Paint graphic. <laughs> no making fun of it, please. It should uh, suffice to illustrate my points. So, okay, what is the rotation strategy and how does it work? Basically, the premise is that every individual pega has its own series of progression where it follows a curve like this, like we'll, we'll look at Pega 1 for an example here. It will, when it's on its way up, it will trend towards a spot at which it wins its races. Then after its winning period is over, it will trend downward all the way until it is getting, you know, very low rankings, at which point it will recover and begin the climb towards wins again. And then this curve just repeats infinitely. So that is unique for every individual pega. Now, the number of races it can take to achieve this also changes on a daily basis, and we'll get into that a bit later, but the overall shape of the curve does not. So whether or not this curve represents five races or 15 races or 30 races doesn't matter. It will still follow the same general progression where it will increase, hit its winning period, then decrease, then have its lowest ranks, then increase, then hit its winning period. So what you do with every individual pega you have is you run consecutive races with it, with no break and no waiting in between. And you run as many races as it takes for you to view one full cycle of this pattern. And I suggest using a spreadsheet or a tool like that to kind of record the placements so that you can see the pattern. I would probably then do the same thing a second time with the Pega, just so that you can be sure that you have your progression down correctly. Once you have that progression for one Pega, you repeat the same process for your other Pegas. And I made the curves here you know, different lengths to demonstrate, like Pega 1's natural rotation from, you know, middle to middle, maybe let's say eight races. This guy maybe takes 12 races to do the same pattern. This guy maybe takes 15 races to do the same pattern. All of that's fine. Um, so what you want to do once you have the basic rotations down for each Pega is you basically want to overlap these curves with one another so that you are always staying above this dotted line. What that means is that if your pega is placing below eighth place or so, you are in the bottom half of the curve and should not be running races on that pega. So um, I will switch here to my secondary graphic, which shows what a curve where you put together the winning parts of it might look like. So if you remember the different colors, this would be Pega 1, this would be Pega 2, this would be Pega 3. So basically, if you optimize the curves for your Pegas, you can always stay above the dotted line and always stay placing between 1st and 8th. Now, whoops, 
Let's go back to my other graphic here. Okay, so how does this change on a daily basis? Basically, the way that the PEGXC game balances win rates is by balancing the different bloodlines against one another. That's um, Haas, Kampona, Klin, and Zan. So if uh, Haas had a very high win rate one day, uh, it might adjust the interval of these patterns to try to bring down that win rate the second day. And effectively, what that does is it will either compress or expand this cycle. So remember how I said uh, we, we could pretend this was an eight race cycle? On day two, it might only be five races. You'll still see the same pattern of you know middle to winning, to middle to losing, to middle to winning. That pattern will always hold true, but the number of races it takes to fully express it will change on a daily basis. But pegas are not balanced against each other. It's just bloodline versus bloodline. So basically, once you have computed what you think your optimal rotation is between your set of three pegas, that will stay the same. It just will take you more or less races to work your way through one interval of it. So um, what do you do if you are in a losing spot with one of your pegas? Well, basically, if you wait about a minute and a half, that has the same effect on your rotation as actually running a race. So if you, you know, start one day on Pega 1 and your first race is, you know, place 14 or 15 or something, um, but you want to start with the blue line for the purposes of your rotation, all that means is that you would try waiting a few minutes and that will move it along its rotation, hopefully to the upward swing. And then, you know, let's say you wait, um, oh, six minutes. That's enough to advance it four races worth. So if you know how long the base rotation in races of your pega takes, all you have to do is wait for a period of time, and that will let you effectively advance it, and then hopefully you can hop on in when you're above the dotted line and heading towards your wins again. Um, now when we talked about balancing bloodline versus bloodline, uh, that also remains true even when you take account of the daily changes. So basically, if this is the pattern that we're trying to run, let's say this normally takes us 10 races. So our first race is uh, we start with red so and we get a really bad placement. Let's say we get a 14th. So we know, okay, we've got to wait for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, according to your spreadsheet, to move it up toward at least an eighth place finish. So you wait 10 minutes, and you get a uh, seventh place here. So now you know that you're in the right spot on your curve. So then you can run races on the red, and let's say this is race one. Whoops. So um, yeah, this is race one, you place here. This is race two, and you place there. This can be race three, race four, race five, race six, race seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So in something like, and I know I made one more line than I said, but whoops. So here, hopefully you would be winning, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so out of those 11, if you're lucky. And um, if you notice that it has gone ahead of where you expect to be, all that means is that your curve for the day has been shortened. So then you can take a look at where, like let's say uh, you know your, your first race is again like a 14, and then your second race is here, and you get a third place with it. Well then what you can intuit from that is that your curve has been compressed together for that day. So you basically have to be way more careful about starting your runs immediately after they finish and you might only be able to get 
you know, up to there in one, two, three, four, five races. And that would mean that you have an extremely compressed curve for that day. But after you've been through the rotation once and with three Pegas, you have 75 races a day, you've only spent five races to discover that for the day. So basically you can, you know, set an alarm and uh, you know that five races is enough to make it through one cycle completely. Five races at a minute and a half a race, that's only seven and a half minutes wait in between cycles. So basically, um, if you were to get these exact results where you would, um, let's say, win in the middle three and lose in these first two, um, you know, every seven and a half minutes, that's going to repeat. So, um, you know, you can just wait um, three minutes after this race here. And then hopefully we'll be back in your cycle here. And if your curve is very expanded for a day, let's still start you with a place 14th or 15th there. And then you've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. If it takes you 15 races to make it through, you know you have a very expanded cycle that day. And so when you have an expanded cycle, that makes it easier to grab these top rankings um, because you have more time to fit them in essentially and can get more of them in a row. But the principle remains the same. And if you ever catch yourself placing, you know, below eighth place or so, you know that you have gotten off of your cycle and you need to uh, let a few race periods transpire before you jump back into it, hopefully on the upward swing rather than the downward one. So that, I think, is the strategy in a nutshell. And hopefully that is easy enough for everyone to understand. It really is, is not so difficult. The important things are getting an accurate baseline. So getting these initial scales for each of your individual pegas is extremely important because those progressions, the you know middle to winning, to middle to losing, to middle to winning, that never changes for any pega. And once you know what your individual pegas are at, all that it requires is some experimentation and playing around with it to come up with a combined pattern like this where you can always stay in the top 50% of placements and hopefully focus your placements you know, around the absolute winning periods for all three of your pegas, which would be you know, about there. So that's the sweet spot that you really want to focus on for all of your pegas. And once you have the base rotations down, all that you have to do is run really two, three, four races should be enough on any individual calendar day to tell you whether or not your pattern has been compressed or expanded in terms of win rate balancing between bloodlines. Um, like we said earlier, if, if this takes you, you know, seven, or seven races to make it all the way through one cycle on day one, but it only takes you five races or four races on day two, you know you've been compressed. If it takes you 11 or 12 races on day three, you know you've been expanded. So um, based, if you have a spreadsheet where you've kept track of your placements, that will help you kind of very easily identify what a median length uh, of racing periods is for your pegas and should help you um, get pretty accurate at uh, sticking to you know the top half of the curve once you've done it for a few days. Um, one last thing to point out, um, we have mentioned a couple times that pegas are balanced by, by bloodline not versus each other. So this strategy is way easier if you have all of the pegas that you are attempting to utilize it all of the same bloodline. For example, if all three of these are Haas and you know that Haas has a compressed timeline one day, 
that same compression ratio will apply to PEGA 1, 2, and 3. But if PEGA 1 is Haas, PEGA 2 is Campona, and PEGA 3 is Clin, Haas could be compressed, Campona could be normal sized, and Clin could be expanded on any given day, or any combination of that. This could be expanded, this could be expanded, this could be compressed, all three of them could be average, you don't know. So basically, the more bloodlines that you try to use this strategy on simultaneously, the more difficult it will be for you to get an accurate idea of uh, both where you are on your individual PEGAS progression, as well as whether or not the bloodline for that PEGA has been compressed or expanded on any given day. So highly recommended to use this strategy all with PEGAS of the same bloodline because that takes uh, most of the work out of it. Uh, one last thing to keep in mind, um, according to the information I got from Verlorn, this strategy is most optimized at something around eight total PEGAS because uh, he's claimed that he's been able to go for a couple hours at a time without getting any result other than a one or a three because instead of having just three curves to play with, if you have eight curves to play with, you know, that, that's a lot of different curves and being able to compress them into a graphic like this, when you have eight potential curves, means that you can pretty much always stay right at the top. So if you are a manager or owner trying to do it and you like running your own races, eight is probably the sweet spot to go to. If you are a scholar, uh, the more the better. Three is sufficient. And you can do something even if you have just two. So with one pega, there's not really... I mean, even with one pega, what you could try to do in a case like that is learn the cycle and then run your races in the top half and then just wait it out when you should be on the bottom half. So, uh, you know, if we're, we're looking at maybe a 10 race cycle and five of the races happen here and five of the races happen here and you're able to run a race and you score, let's say, 10th and then on your second race of the day, you score eighth, you know that you are right at the beginning point of this graph. So run your races in that point until you're back down to ranking eighth again, and then wait, and let's say that takes you five races to do. So in that case, if you wait five races or about seven and a half minutes, that should bring you back to this point, which is the same as this one. So you could even try cutting out one or two races where you get maybe like eighth and fifth. So if you if you go tenth, eighth, fifth, third, first, second, fifth, you can you know wait it out and then even try to wait out that portion of it so that you only are getting the wins. However, the more you play with it, the, the harder it gets, and um, none of these times are, are really absolute either. So when I say waiting a minute should advance it one step, well, maybe maybe it doesn't because of server lag or, or you know, who knows. It's not like we have access to the code. So, um, you know, don't try to get too cute with it. Um, just try to generally massage your win rates a little bit and, um, when possible, avoid this part of your curve entirely. So even if you're getting some eighths, sevenths, six, fives, fours, even if you're getting these, that's not bad because then you know that wins are just around the corner. So try to get as many wins as you can, but don't get too cute or you risk missing the wins entirely and jumping in here instead. So that is it. I think that describes all of the information and tips and tricks that I learned from Verlorn. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that you find it helpful and that it helps boost your win rates. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're so inclined. And I hope to see you again on my channel in the future. Have a nice week, everyone. Bye-bye.